In today's episode, we're going to be playing with fire. Well, maybe a little bit more than that. Hey, welcome to FX Friday. This is the show where we show you how to do various different effects to add to your low budget films or movies. So if you haven't seen my little short film that I just released called Flaming Mad, I'll go ahead and put a link right here. Check that out. But now let's go ahead and dive into the computer and I'm gonna show you how we did the flaming effect so you can do the same thing with your videos. Hello and welcome to this tutorial. I wanted you to be able to follow along with me, so I decided to do this one in HitFilm Express, which is a free editing software platform put out by a company called FX Home, if you haven't heard of it. So FX Home is not sponsoring this video in any shape or form, but I just like the software. I think it's like a combination of Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects all rolled up in the one. So pretty cool. It's pretty robust for a free editing platform, but if you want more power, you can always upgrade to the pro version and you can also add some packs, as you can see here, to the free version that you have. Now, I'm going to go ahead and leave the link in the description so you can download this and follow along with this tutorial. And if you happen to be watching this on rockfilms.com, just look under this video for the link. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to try and do this within 11 steps. So the first step is workspace. But first, we have to create a project to get to the timeline. So let's do that first. Go ahead and click New here. This is going to open the project settings. We're going to keep this as is, 1920 by 1080. That's the resolution we're working in. So click OK. It's going to take a couple of seconds to load up. Okay, so step number one, workspace. So come up here as soon as you open this up and you see the timeline here, click window, workspaces, and click editing. This way you won't get confused by using a different type of workspace whenever you're following along. So step two, let's bring in our clips. So if you're familiar with any other editing programs, you know that you have to go to file and import or something like that, right? Well, in this case, they make it really convenient for you. Right here is a little import button, so you can click that and you can import the clips you need. So I'm going to grab the clips that I need right here and open this up. So step number three, we're going to trim the clips. We're going to trim each one. The green screen won't be 100% accurate, but we're going to further trim that to our needs later. Okay, so basically we're going to trim our clip in the trimmer here, which is a convenient little tool. After Effects has this as well. What we're going to set is an in and an out point, and then we're going to keep the footage pretty much that's in between those two points. So this is to set your in point right here, and this is to set the out point. So first of all, we're going to slide this little slider to the section where we want the video to start, which is right after he says playing with fire. Well, I say he says, this is me. <laughs> but uh, here we go, fire. Okay, right there. So that's going to be my in point. And then we're going to slide this down to right after I smile. Right there. Okay, so to drag this in, we just grab it right here with our mouse. Hold down our mouse and drag it in. And we don't have to worry about this. Just let's zoom in a little bit on the timeline here so we can see what we have. Whew. All right, so we have that done. So actually, we're going to have to trim this. So let's go ahead and do that. This is a long clip. So let me slide my slider. So I, um, I did it twice, but I want this one here instead of the medium shot. This is the close up. I want this shot because I think the flame's going to be a little bit more higher quality. OK, we're going to set our in point there. And out point there. Okay, we'll just leave this in here because I'll be able to grab it from the trimmer window and drop it in when we move further along. Okay, so what we need to do now is track this. However, we can't track that in the editor. We actually have to make a composite shot out of this video clip because it's kind of like an After Effects when you create a composition. So you can't do tracking on the editor. You have to go into the composition, okay? So to do that, we want to right click on this footage and make composite shots. Okay. 
It's just like a composition in After Effects, as I said before. So let's go ahead and rename this. We're going to call this Flame Finger Comp, and we'll click OK. Let's expand this window a little bit more. Okay, so now we can go ahead and add a tracker. So let's go ahead and click on this drop down box, click tracks, and go ahead and click this little plus icon. Okay, we'll expand the window this way more so we can see our little tracking node here. So what I want to do, I want to be able to see this a little bit closer. So I want to zoom in on this video here. I'm going to use this little toggle switch. We're going to go in 100%. going to grab my little hand so I can see my finger here. Go back to the arrow to select it. Now, keep note that if you drag right here in the green, just the green box is going to move and it's not going to allow you to do anything else. So keep that centered. We want to drag inside the red box here. And we don't want to grab the blue point because that's going to move the point around. So just make sure that it's not blue when your mouse is in this red box. Click that and then you can drag it, okay? I'm going to put this towards the top middle of the finger and it should be good. So I'm going to go ahead now and click track forward. One thing I want to add here, Hit Film Express is a pretty smart program. If there was a lot of motion blur or I was moving my hand around a lot, it will stop the tracker and say, hey, where does this point need to be? So you can move this point around to the exact center of whatever you were tracking. Then you can click track forward again. If it gets lost, it'll do it again. It'll stop for you and you can adjust your little point here and then click forward again. So pretty cool. OK, so we have that done. Now what we need to do is go ahead and transfer all of the tracking keyframes to kind of like a null object in After Effects. But in this case, they call it a point. Okay, so we're going to do that right now. So to do that, we're going to go up here to New Layer and click that and create a point. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and rename this right clicking on the track. I'm just going to call this Flame and it's going to click out of here. So the next step here is we need to apply the track points from this tracker on the main video point to our point here, which is kind of like a null object, as I said earlier in After Effects. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, what we need to do here, well, let's go ahead and look at the trackers. Let's open this up. OK, we can see all of our keyframes, right? So what we're going to be doing now is copying all of these keyframes over to our flame point. And you don't have to select the keyframes or anything like that. It's a lot less work than you think. Here we go. Here's how easy it is, right? All we have to do is come up here and take a look. Step two, apply to layer. That's what we want to do. So we go into the layer section here and just choose flame and then click apply. OK, looks like nothing happened. But if we go over here and double check, click on transform. And as you can see under positions here, all of our keyframes are tracked over. Pretty cool, right? OK, next step, we want to bring in our flame clip now. So what I'm going to do is grab the trimmed flame clip up here and just add that to the timeline. Now I want this on top, so I'm going to drag it up here. OK, so you probably are wondering what happened. The clip disappeared or it's not showing up, but in fact it is. It's right here. But as you can see, it's a little bit shorter than where our timeline bar is. So that's why we can't see it. As you can see now, we can see it come in the view. So the first thing I want to do is just line up the flame shot when it goes out when I was blowing it. Right. So what I need to do is bring down my opacity on this layer. So I'm going to open it up open up my transform so I can see my opacity. And I just want to drag that down a little bit so I can see myself as well. So let's scrub through this and see if this is lining up right. Actually, that looks pretty good. Uh, it needs to come back a little bit more. Because right here is when I really do the breath. So let's pull this back a little bit further. Maybe a little bit more. 
Yeah, perfect. Okay, so what I want to do now, I need to expand the track a little bit more to the beginning. So I have it on, and I want this to fade in, which I'll do as well. Okay, cool. Looks good. I'm going to bring back up the opacity to 100%. Close this off. Okay, so let's go ahead now, and this is how you parent an object, a text, an image, whatever you have, to a tracking point, which is the flame point here, which is kind of like the null object again. So this is like pick whipping that to that, kind of like in After Effects. But in this case, you just toggle this down and choose whatever you want to parent it to. Okay, so now if I scrub through, you can see that it is following the track underneath. But we're still going to have some issues because this was not locked down. I was moving it from side to side and up and down. So we're going to have to add a few more keyframes in there afterwards to make sure it matches and stays right. So what I want to do now is go ahead and we're going to zoom in on this so we just see green screen. Okay, so we're going to scale this up to just green screen. Fills the whole screen there. And next we need to bring in a keyer. So under effects over here, we have the keying folder. So let's open that up. As we can see here, Chroma Keyer is actually an add-on pack. So we have to buy this to key, right? No, not really. You don't have to add this. This is probably for more advanced keying, but we can use the luminance key here to do what we want to do here with this green screen. So let's go ahead and grab this and drag it on the clip. So as you can see, it doesn't look too good, right? It didn't do much of anything, so we're going to have to tweak a few settings here. So let's open up the luminance key. I'm going to set this threshold up a little bit higher. Okay, I think 69 looks pretty good. Let's bring up the tolerance just a little bit. I think that looks good. So we'll leave it at that. Okay, so the next thing I want to do, because I can see there's something right here, so let me move the transform position. We're going to position this. I'm going to just hold my mouse down and drag left with my mouse here to move this over. So as you can see, there's the little highlighted of the bar here kind of showing. So what we're going to do, we're just going to mask around the flame itself. So let's go ahead and move this into position. Gonna go ahead and move this goes up and down to about there. I'm actually gonna scale this back down now to 100% and hit enter. And now I can move the position where I want it. So as you can see, I kind of wanted it a little bit above the finger instead of right on the finger. I think it just looks cooler. So we'll go with this. Now let's grab our pen tool here and let's mask. So we'll go ahead and select that, grab our pen tool, and we're going to mask this out. So we'll just mask around the flame. Now remember the flame's going to be blowing in this direction. So I want to leave a little bit more room on the mask over here. So that should be good. We shouldn't have to do anything with feathering or anything like that. We should be all good. I think that'll work, guys. Let's take a look. Okay, let's see what this looks like. We're going to go ahead and scale to fit. And let's play this. I still see a little bit there. But I think this will work. You kind of can get the idea of how to do this, right? I would fix this. I'm like a perfectionist. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, let's go back to mask shape here. Just a pinch right there. Let's see what that looks like. And there you have it. Pretty cool, right? So it's an easy way to add in fire into 
your scenes by using free software. So yeah, that's why I wanted to do this tutorial this way. Just in case you can't find any footage online with fire or whatever, you can do this yourself by using green. And if you don't have a big TV like I have, just go to Walmart, get a green poster, something like that, or green sheets or fabric or whatever. We'll make sure it's lit well, though, if it's evenly as possible. So make sure there's a lot of lighting in the room. Make sure that this is further enough away from the screen so there's no shadows because that'll be less work. You have to deal with shadows in post when you're trying to key this out. OK, that's going to wrap up this episode. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like and share and make sure to subscribe if you're new here to the channel so you can get notified when we post new videos just like this one. And be sure to leave me some comments below on what you thought about the show and leave me some links in those comments with your short movies or videos where you added these effects as well so I can check it out and leave you some comments. I'm Ronnie Rock Smith with Rock Films and here we believe in sharing the magic one clip at a time. And until next time, have an FX Friday.